Good evening, Deliverance Center. Welcome to Phoenix. YouTubers, welcome to the service tonight. I'm Brother Mike. Uh, I'm on a mission from God. Uh, and by God's grace, I'm going to get this thing pulled off before I kick the bucket. <clears throat> welcome to the service. All right, let's go ahead and start our autoimmune disease coming up. What's today? 16th? It's next Friday. Okay. Yeah, the seminar is next Friday, autoimmune diseases. Okay, here's the radio programs. I'm on uh, every day of the week now. And uh, I found out yesterday the other station, 12, 1280, is still playing my shows in the morning at 7 o'clock. And they're, they're playing them for free. So thanks. Thank, may God bless them. I didn't even know it was on. Okay. <clears throat> you can get all the radio programs anytime you're in the mood for it on soundclown.com slash hardcore-christianity. If you switch over to Good Search from Google and put our ministry name in, they'll uh, pay us every time you surf the web. We have four YouTube channels. And the first one is our Deliverance Training Channel, if you want to get into the healing and deliverance ministry, that'd be a good place to start. All of our services are always live. Thursday night's on live stream, and tonight is on YouTube. Everybody's on YouTube. Speaking of uh, YouTube, <clears throat> when I meet mentally ill Christians, I have a list I send them, because most of them are out of state. So, it shows you how to go through deliverance. If you have anybody else you think needs to be delivered, you can send me an email at mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I'll send you the miracle list. If you're on YouTube, your commission is to go to your church, particularly if you're in a mega church, and open up a terror cell. Start terrorizing the devil. What you do is you start picking off the sick people. You find a partner or two, and then you peel them off separately. Okay. Now, some people do it differently, but then they get kicked out quickly. Uh, so what you want to do is peel the people off separately so that you don't do something in during the service. When they see you do it during the service, the devil gets killed. And then they send the ministry team to you. And then they kick your fanny out of that church. And so I hear someone with an anointed giggle over there who this might have happened to. Okay, so what you want to do is work undercover. <laughs> uh, okay, that must have been a sign. <clears throat> thank you for your donations. The donations have been picking up lately. And by the way, thank you for your food donations. Just put them in the kitchen there. Our healing house, every week, there's people coming in from out of state and going through healing and deliverance. So it's going, it's working. And thank you for your prayers. A lot of sick people have come here and been healed thanks to you. You need a donation receipt for last year? Well, you can't have one, so it's, it's too bad for you. No, if you just send me an email or something or call me, I'll be happy to give you one. Okay. Thank you for your donations. Thank you for your prayers. And your donations on the website have been very good. Thank you. Appreciate that. And uh, let's do our Bible study. Uh, the human mind is really something interesting. It's been researched for a hundred years by people that are extremely intelligent. Scientists and researchers. And after a hundred years of research, they know very little about it. It's so miraculous. It's so incredible. It could be arguably the greatest thing God ever created in the natural world. 
the human mind. It's so ridiculously amazing. Nobody can figure it out. But we have learned some things about it. We'll go over that tonight. And I think I can help you uh, step up your ministry very quickly. Show you how to do it. As you know, this is a review. Human beings are made out of five parts. Your body is the suitcase. Inside the suitcase is the clothes. Representing what? Your inner man. Your soul, your spirit, your mind, and your conscience. Correct? Well, in your mind, <clears throat> they've discovered that it's made up of all kind of you know, compartments, so to speak. And for example, if you go over here to the Motel 6 up here on Indian School and the I-17 freeway, have you ever seen that Motel 6 up there? <clears throat> kind of ratty. Uh, that's the largest Motel 6 in the United States. That one right over there. And it's made up of yeah, room after room after room. Okay? Well, that's kind of how your mind's built. It's got little compartments in them. For example, one of them is your subconscious. I'm not going to go into that tonight. I have a theory about your subconscious. I can't prove this, but I think it's located in your brain stem. And that's the little doorway to your dream life. When you sleep at night, you're your mind kind of drifts off into different kinds of dreams. I think it's related to the subconscious. You also have your thought life. You use your thoughts for everything, correct? A thought. I'm having a thought right now. I'm speaking that thought out. Two plus two is four. I'm using my mind. I was thinking about the problem. You have your uh, comprehension skills, right? Uh, some people have very high comprehension skills. Mine are, you know, average at best. So somebody with high comprehension skills usually is good at like being an electrician, a carpenter, an architect, someone who can uh, look at something and it just kind of clicks in their mind on how it goes together, so to speak. It's weird. I don't have the uh, skill. And for years, I tried to pretend I did have it. And uh, what, what kind of people are we? We're the kind of people that buy something from Walmart, and we look at it, and we don't look at the directions. And we put the thing together thinking we have good co mechanical comprehension. And you, you, know, you come up with three-legged tables and different things. Now, as I'm older, I overcame that delusion. So now, when I buy something, I um, have my wife put it together. But if she's not available, <laughs> I look at the directions. And uh, if you buy something from Walmart, they, they make the directions so that a, a second grader, one, two, and it's in pictures. See, but somebody who has good comprehension skill doesn't need to do what I do. They just kind of look at something. It just clicks into place right in their head. You ever met anybody like that? They're really great builders. They look at something once and boom, oh my God, they put this thing together. Well, there's another area of your mind that has incredible spiritual benefits. And that is... Your imagination. Genesis chapter 8. The Lord smelled a sweet savor and he said in his heart, this was after the flood, I will not ever again curse the ground because of man for the imagination of man's heart is evil even from his youth. Proverbs 6. These six, six things the Lord hates. Seven are an abomination to him. What are those? Strutting. Lying. 
murder. People who sit around and imagine evil things. <clears throat> What's the base, best example? Nazi. I know this sounds weird, but it took a great level of it, co mechanical comprehension and skill in their imagination to come up with a system of mass murder. About two dummies didn't come up with that system. That took high level of intelligence, tremendous comprehension skills, and a vivid and powerful imagination. Can you imagine how hard it would be to murder six million people? How do you do it? First of all, how do you get them there? How, how, do, you, how do you kill them? What do you do with the bodies after you're done? I mean, the whole system was satanic. But it would require, required what? Yeah, evil imagination. You had to figure out that whole system that a regular person would have never come up with. No, no normal human being could have come up with an idea on how do you murder six million people. That's not going to happen. But what were they using? They were using their imagination for evil things. Correct? Sowing discord, false testimony. Those things really bugged the Lord. Now check it out. Here's more evil imagination. Jesus touched on it. In the Old Testament, uh, adultery was a physical activity. You looked over at the other tent. You saw Jacob's wife. And you looked at her and you said, wow, look at that robe. Look at that. She's hot. Yeah. Well, this guy had not sinned yet. Correct? But he did if he got her to come over to his tent. And he had intercourse with her. That was adultery. And that was a capital offense. And that was you were in a bad spot if you got caught doing that. Correct? He is stoned. In the New Covenant now, adultery was expanded by the Lord. And now you can commit adultery never having touched someone. As long as you have developed a passionate desire for the person. You can't do that without using your imagination. Pornography becomes an addiction when the demons get the person to use their imagination. See, your imagination makes something real. The Greek word for lust there is epithemia. It means an ardent passion. So that means if you look at someone and you find them attractive, that's not adultery. Look at that beautiful woman. So pretty. And then you go on. That's not adultery. This thing on? Are you bored? What's happening here? Do I, shall I switch this topic? Adultery only occurs in the heart when the person develops a passion for that person, which includes your imagination. Hello? The demons can take your imagination and turn it into a fantasy. And a fantasy is your imagination gone wild. Fantasies are like it's real. Your imagination doesn't make it feel like it's real. You use your thoughts in your mind.
to scan your imaginations. You have an imagination of something, something you see, uh, something you want, a new car. And you're th you think about the kind of car you want, click, 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 and then you really want that car, and so you start using your imagination. Huh? And then you sometimes perform what, what they used to call daydreaming, which is someone resting temporarily in their imagination. Uh, some people have incredible imaginations. For example, uh, Walt Disney. This guy's had an imagination on steroids. It was unreal. I'd have hated to get a look in his mind, because it must have been vivid. Anything could have been in there. Okay? Stuff I never even considered in a million years. Walt had it running through all the time. People's imaginations differ just like your thoughts differ from one person to the other, just like your IQ differs. Everybody has a little bitty different mind. Correct? <coughs> Lust moves it from your mind to the soul. When it hits the soul, that's when it becomes sinful. See? Hey, did you talk to Bob last week? Yeah. Did he tell you what he did? Oh man, yeah. You know, I'd like, I'd like to. Oh, I'd like to kill that guy. Now, right now, I just said that, and it's only a thought, correct? But if I wanted to take that further, I could move it into my imagination if I chose to do it. I could actually start thinking about killing him. If I focus on it long enough, it could become a fantasy. If I focus on it long enough, it could become a mental obsession. Notice, for a second, the person can control their thoughts, their imaginations, their fantasies. Notice in the spirit world, the Holy Spirit, angels, demons, what have you, they can read you inside. In the spirit world, not in the natural world, what you're thinking right now, what you're imagining is foreign to me. I can't look in there and see. I'm just a regular person. In the spirit world, that stuff's available for somebody to review. Am I right? Yes. When it goes into the heart, notice that. When it goes into the heart and affects your soul, then, then it becomes something good or something bad. A casual fleeting thought really amounts to nothing. But a thought progressing into your imagination starts to take on a life of its own. And you can have good and bad thoughts and good and bad imaginations. Romans 1. Here's another example of what? Human beings deteriorating 
to the point where God had to start over. He had to reboot the system. After he rebooted the system, there were eight souls left. Who would they be? Yeah, no one. Noah and his family, but look at why did God do it? The people, the people's thoughts. No, that wasn't why he did it. They were all having bad thoughts, but everybody has bad thoughts. But look at their imaginations. Once they all became vain, every human had deteriorated to the point where their imaginations, not just their thoughts, were now vain. And God had to reboot the system. The best thing he had to use was who? Noah. I mean, he had to use the best of what he had, right? Noah was a great guy, but far from perfect, including his family. Dialogismus means what? Those are the thoughts that you have that you spend time pondering on, right? So I'm having a thought. I like that white outfit. I just left that outfit right now and then went over here. I had another thought. That's not logismus. It's the thoughts that you focus on. What you choose to focus on okay, triggers your imagination. That's why the Bible talks in several places about meditation. Meditation is a collection of thoughts that you focus on. And your imagination starts to bring them life. It's a human imagination that built the planet. Right? Human imagination is a spectacular thing. For good and bad. According to this, in Proverbs 23, <coughs> what a person really thinks about themselves and <coughs> others doesn't always appear to you. Oh yeah, you learn that quickly as a counselor. You learn that, you learn that your first two months in your new career after you get out of college. What someone says to you may not be what they really believe. And unless you can get to the heart of it in here, past the thoughts, you're not going to know what that person truly believes. How someone thinks in their heart, that's how they really feel not what they just processed here and said to you that could be a con job could be flattery it could be embellishment could be a number of things true first Chronicles 28 Solomon my son know the Lord God your fathers and serve him with a perfect heart and a willing mind well, you can't have one without the other. Correct? If your thoughts are jacked up, your heart is going to be off. And your imaginations will be vain. Almost like the domino syndrome. Bing, 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 bing. You hit that one and those go down. For the Lord searches and understands what? Not just our thoughts, 
Your thoughts don't make up a person. Human beings are far deeper than that. Animals, yeah, that's a different story. You can once you figure out what an animal's thinking, that's pretty much it. Correct? Oh yeah. When I was a kid, I used to watch this show. I was fascinated with it. It was called uh, Wild Kingdom. And this neutral of Omaha, Wild Kingdom. That was it. Yeah. And this old man was on there. I mean, I think this guy was born old. <laughs> he had this white everything. I think his name was Perkins. And he had, he had this spectacular brain. He was like a genius. And he would tell you all about these animals. And, but I noticed that he wouldn't do anything with the animals unless it was a kitty cat or a you know, friendly animal. He had this other guy with him, this poor guy named Jim was his name, bigger, big guy. And I noticed that anytime anything had to be done with a crocodile or a snapping turtle or anything like that, this Perkins guy always had Jim do it. Because his mama didn't raise no food. <laughs> but in order to work in that field, you got to have an incredible imagination. But animals, I noticed, don't have imaginations. See? And I was watching one show where they were, it was a show on tigers. And I noticed as a kid, tigers are very easy to read. And they're very easy to figure out what they're thinking. If they're laying there doing nothing, it's all cool up there. If you see this thing, you don't need anybody to interpret that. Humans are not that way. You need somebody to interpret a human being, every human, because how they appear is not what they really are. And I showed that poor guy, Jim. And you went home with nightmares every night. <laughs> but I guess work was tough to come by back then, and he had to take that job. Mark 11, check this out. Jesus said something spectacular, but you got to break the verse down to actually figure it out. This verse has caused a lot of pain among Christians. Let's go through it just briefly. I say to you, whatever things you desire, when you pray, Believe that you receive them, and as am I, it will be. Well, that's not what he said. He said, whatever things you desire, aiteo means, as we discussed before, that's to ask for something. It means to ask, but it means to ask for something that you've already been promised you could have. It's not to ask for something you don't know is yours. Do you have the time? Well, you're hoping the guy has a watch. No, that's not Itail. Itail means when you pray to God, and God's already promised you a benefit, you are asking for a benefit that you already know you've been promised and you expect to get. When you pray and ask God to heal you, you, most Christians don't get healed. Why? Because they're not asking, expecting to get healed because they know they've been promised that in the atonement. They're asking, hoping. If God promises you benefit, and you ask him for it, you're only asking for something he already told you you could have. So you're expecting to get it. Let's read it again. What, what things soever you ask for expecting to get, because you know it's already yours. When you pray, not before or after, during your prayer, believe that you receive it. Pistuo is the Greek verb for faith. And it means to do something or step out on your faith. It's a Greek verb. 
the verse is saying something completely different than most people think it says. When you, whatever things you ask for, knowing it's already been promised to you, so you're expecting to get it. When you pray, go ahead and step out as if you got it. Do something. And SOMI, it will be. Well, can you imagine that verse it would only apply to someone who already has a relationship with God? Wouldn't it? Someone who doesn't have a relationship or who is somebody who just got saved or somebody who's ignorant, that verse wouldn't apply to that kind of a Christian, would it? Well, because they don't have any kind of relationship, so they don't know, number one, what they've been promised. They're not sure of what God said they could have. So they're just asking for something, hoping, almost like darts. I hope I get, come on, get close. That prayer, what? Doesn't get answered. Notice that this is all going on inside the heart of the person. It's past their thoughts, now it's here. You told me I could have it, okay. I want that. I'm asking you for it. You already said I could have it. And since that's already mine, and you said I could have it, I'm going to act like I have it. When you pistuo, it does what? It happens. Okay. Listen. If you change your imagination, you will be shocked at what happens. You'll be shocked. Check it out. I'll prove it to you. Matthew 8. Jesus entered Capernaum. They came to him at Centurion, begging him, saying, Lord, my pice, my young boy, lies at home sick of the palsy. That's the Greek word paralyticus. It means to be have a spinal cord injury. He's grievously tormented. Some kid in the centurion system had apparently sustained an injury and he was being tortured because he was paralyzed. That's the way the verse basically reads. Jesus said, well, I'll come and heal him. And the centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy you should come under my roof, but speak the word only and my boy shall be healed. What was happening there? The centurion he would use his thoughts when he heard about Jesus being in a certain place, and he says to himself, I'm going to send a contingent to him on behalf of the boy. What's he doing there? He's using his imagination. He sees Christ here. He sees the boy healed here. He sees the boy walking again in his imagination. Correct? He thinking his thoughts, oh, that's Yahshua, that's the Messiah. I'm, I'm, I'm a big Jewish fan. I, I build a synagogue for the Jews. I, I, I've heard the Tanakh. I, the, uh, hey, that's my book. I like that book. I heard about Yahshua. I'm, listen, he can heal my boy. But the boy's not healed. But at the beginning of your miracle, listen carefully, your thoughts generate your imagination. His imagination took over and he saw, they used to call it your mind's eye. He saw in his mind's eye Jesus healing the boy and the boy up walking even though at that moment he was physically paralyzed. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray believe you receive them and it will be. The centurion says listen 
I've already gone over this in my thoughts and my imagination. I don't need you to come to my house. I'm not even worthy for you to get come anywhere near my home. Just speak it here. Because I've already seen the boy healed. Here, I see him walking. And then he starts to talk about his imaginations. He starts to explain them to him. Check this out. Hey, I'm a big shot. I got soldiers under me. I tell this guy to do this and that and this and that. Everybody do it, does it. Notice this word here in English, servant, same word as the other one. For the boy, pace, but it's actually a different Greek word. Doulos is a slave. But it was the same English word. He's talking about his slaves, not other boys. You go here, you go there, they go there. Hey, I'm in charge. I'm, I'm, a, I'm the boss. And I know you're the boss. Here, in my imagination. I heard the word. I had my thoughts. I believed in my heart. And my imagination already saw the miracle. Before I came to you. Oh, if you can see it here, you can, you'll see it here. If you can't see it here, you'll never see it there. Go your way as you have this duo stepped out on your faith. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. What happened there? This centurion had a vivid imagination. He saw the boy running before he got to Jesus. If you can imagine it and see it in here, you can see it here. His pice, his boy, was healed the same hour. Check it out. A woman, a gune, that's a Greek word for wife, a wife which was diseased with a hemorrhage, what is that? A hemorrhage in English. She was slowly hemorrhaging. She had this dripping, probably cervix cancer, slow progressing, for 12 years. Okay? And she came up behind Jesus and she touched the craspatone, the tassel of his hemation robe. Everybody's read these stories, right? Yeah, that's why I chose them. What is she doing here? Well, she explains it. She said within herself, the inner man, in her imagination, while she was home, when somebody told her, hey, Jesus of Nazareth is passing your way. He's downtown. He's going through the main As soon as she heard that, her thoughts collected it, and then what happened? She let her imagination go. Her imagination saw herself touching the tassel on his robe. She saw herself completely cured before she got there. Why do most Christians and their Christian life suck? Because their imaginations are vain. They can't see it here. So it never shows up here. Before she left the house, she saw herself cured. She said within herself, if I just touch the tassel on the robe, I will be sozo delivered. 
Jesus turns around and he says, through, through got there, that is a young woman, like junior high, okay? Which makes sense because back then, women got married very young. So this poor woman was very young, probably 13, 14, 15, something like that. And he says something very revealing. The verse was mistranslated in the King James. Tharseo means to have courage. Christians are gutless losers. Why? They don't have an imagination. They don't see it here first. And so they're afraid. They'll never see it there. So Jesus said, not be of good comfort. Oh no, that's a different Greek word. Be be courageous. My God. Listen, I just hit the ball out of the park. I just showed you why Christianity doesn't work. People have difficulty being courageous when they're doubting. They become passive cowards. They won't go for help. They won't make any changes. They won't repent. They won't do something because they're doubting and they are not courageous. So the Holy Ghost was using this fantastic story to show people that whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and be courageous and it will be. You say, well, I'm not following this Bible study. Well, that's because you're a new believer. If you have any interest in being a disciple, you're listening to every word I'm saying here. Inside there, if you can imagine it, you can receive it. If you can see it here, you can see it there. First Timothy 1 7, God has not given us the spirit of Delia, cowardice. Paul touches on the same subject Jesus did with that woman with cervix cancer. Yeah, oh yeah. You say, well, this doesn't make any sense. Sure it does. I'm gonna tell you something. You gotta have some guts and some courage to lay hold of the promises of God. They won't come to you naturally. Why? The devil's going to fight you every step of the way. Be courage. Be strong. Fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I am your God. Isaiah. What was he saying there? You've got to have some courage to get the promises of God. Because the devil's not going to let you walk up and take them. Forget it. Forget it. You can forget it. But I want to tell you something. The devil can't stop your imagination. If you repent tonight and change the way you think and use your imagination, you got him by the throat. If you can see it here, you'll see it there. The woman, the, the young woman, the young girl who got there, was made sozo delivered from that very hour. How'd she get delivered? She used her imagination long before she got there. She didn't just pop in there like she was teleported, like she was at a <coughs> prophetic or charismatic conference. Now we're going to teleport somewhere. No, homie, don't play that. 
she had to walk there in pain. Yes. Yes, she did. See? If you're one of these prophetic kooks, you just, well, let's just lay down here and drift out of your body and go, on, go to India. No, real people have to walk someplace in case you hadn't heard. Just newsflash. There you go. She had to fight her way down there. Jesus wasn't telling her to have courage. He already knew she had it. He said that for our benefit. How'd she get from there to there in pain, dripping blood? Her imagination. She already saw herself well before she got there. Whatsoever things you desire that you've been promised and you ask for it because it's already yours, believe that you receive it, step out on it, and it will be. Your imagination can be oh, your greatest asset. If you can see it, You'll see it. Brother Mike, you don't understand. My, my daughter, she's on crack and she's pregnant again. Okay. I don't need to hear that. You want a miracle? You got to first see her at the altar there. You got to see her. We crying out to God here first. Here's another one, Matthew 9. When Jesus came to the ruler's house, he saw the minstrels and the people making noise. What's this story? Of course you know what it is. His brother Jerry, as he runs downtown, he falls on his knees. He's begging and worshiping. He said, my daughter's dying at this very moment. Come and heal her. She may already be dead, he says. Jesus said, I, just like he said to the centurion, just like he always says, by the way, I will come and heal him. That took some guts. Oh. Be courageous, he said to her. Brother Jerry, as he was a ruler of the synagogue, you know, pastors and ministers, I've counseled them for years, they've got egos and they get trapped in Christianity. They're stuck. And their lives really stink in many cases. Here's why. Because other people look at them and because they have a, uh, a degree and a title, they're, they're supposed to perform to a certain level, and then sometimes they can't even be a human. See? Yeah. And, and ministers and pastors are just the same as we are. They're just regular people. They're no different. This guy here going down there and falling on his knees in front of everybody, that took some guts because he was the ruler. Of this. He was the leader of their synagogue. He was the boss, and here he is out in the street on his hands and knees. But... Let me, let me tell you something funny about people. Some people will not pray and they will not do anything until they're desperate yes. for a miracle from God. That's the God's honest truth. Yes. You can tell him 500,000 times. You can talk to him to your blue in the face, mm -hmm. but until they're in a spot of total desperation, they won't make a move. So you know what I do? I trick the devil sometimes. <laughs> I'll just pray that prayer ahead of time. I said, Lord, I don't like to pray this prayer, but can you go ahead and move here and make something happen? I never tell him what to do. Like, Lord, hit him with a lightning bolt. Run over him with a truck. <laughs> Have him fall down a ditch. No, I don't do any of that insanity. I just say, Lord, thou knowest. But some people, not everybody, thank God. Whew. Not everybody. Some people will not come to God until they're broken. 
He's on his high horse at the synagogue. I'm running the show here. I'm the pastor of the mega church. Yahoo! But when their family members dying, when they're dying, when the tragedy hits them, that's a horse of a different color, as Grandpa used to say. He's down in the street begging for mercy. Jesus says, as usual, I will come and heal her. So he, they head on up. They're going home. They get to the house and check this out. Something incredible happens. Jesus walks into the th door over the threshold. Boom! The girl is raised from the dead. Nobody prayed for her. Nobody touched her. Nobody looked at her. As soon as he went, boom! Bang! She raises from the dead. Unbelievable. Now that's a miracle. That's one of my miracles. That's a miracle in my book. Nobody knows it because they're too busy mourning. You're getting this, right? I know you are. Hey, you're starting to enjoy this. You weren't up till now. <laughs> they're all making a noise, and guess what happens here? None of them have an imagination for resurrection. It's not there. They looked in their imagination cupboard. Click. Oh, it's barren. Nothing in there. Brother Jarius didn't have it either. While they're going home, the people from the synagogue come and they tell him, don't talk to that teacher anymore. She already dead. He's speechless. God in his mercy can trigger your imagination if you will repent of your sins and ask him to help you. Jesus says to brother Jarius keep on believing Whatsoever things you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and it will be yes. Brother Jarius loses his imagination fear starts to take over why? Fear is the devil's trump card. He always sends fear spirits mm -hmm. to make people doubt And he wipes out their imagination through fear How does he do that? He swaps them out. They suddenly start to have fear thoughts Fear imaginations their faith tanks and their miracle is gone It starts to happen to brother Jerry as he turns around in panic and he hears these words keep on believing Because Whatsoever things you desire when you pray believe that you receive them and They shall be He walks in the door plants his feet boom The girl wakes up nobody notices it nobody has Nobody has any imagination for a resurrection Can't you see it negative thoughts Destroy your divine imagination and once your imaginations are gone you can't see it here So you'll never see it here What does God have to do with that well, he's illustrating it here. It's symbolic guess what happens to all these people He says hey, she's not dead anymore. I just walked in the dope Nobody was checking on her. They're all out here mourning Nobody had any imagination nobody had it there was no resurrection here What do you do with them? What you're gonna do tonight She's taking a nap Kathudo means to take a nap. She wasn't dead Taking a nap they start laughing at him why their imagination did not include a resurrection from the dead because they already knew she was dead. They had been in there and she died. They weren't stupid. Guess what happened to those people? When the people were ekbalo, that's the same Greek word used to describe casting out demons. Ekbalo means to throw out the door. Throw out. He, he didn't say, now, can I 
pardon me for a minute, can you stop mourning for a second? Would you kindly go out the door? No. He had, either he did it or somebody else did it. They shoved these people out the door. Why? Listen, you can't have anybody in your life who has no imagination for God. You better get rid of them. Amen. You better get rid of them. Jesus took the people out who had no imagination and he took only four people in who still had it. They walk in the door, he reaches over, picks her up, she stands up. Why? She was taking a nap. I'm the only one that apparently likes this story. What it is is she was raised from the dead and nobody knew it. Oh, don't you understand? Your miracle is has been following you for years, trying to get into your imagination, waiting for you to have the courage to step up. Whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and it will be. Stand up. Get up, sweetheart. It was that simple. A guy wrote, means she stood up. The maid, Corsian, is a what? A young girl. Junior high, grade schooler. Get up, sweetheart. She stood up, taking a nap. Okay. Most people take a nap, what? Laying down. I have had I've had something different sometimes in my services. <laughs> but generally speaking. People are laying down when they're taking a nap. <coughs> Matthew 9, when Jesus departed, two blind men followed him, crowds are yelling at him, hey! I'll tell you what, you go into most churches now, you start yelling for God, they'll usher you out the door. We can't have anybody desperate for God in this church, this is a proper prim church. Oh, not these two guys. You know why? They had already seen themselves healed before they ever got down on the street. They're walking now and somebody's helping them. They're with a crowd. They, they can't see anything. But they saw. Bl these blind people couldn't see, but they could see. Most Christians can see, but they can't. See. Son of David, have mercy on us. Wow. When he came to the house, the blind man came to him. Well, that's hard to do when you're blind. It's not hard to do when you already see yourself seeing. They already knew it. Because they could see it here. If you can see it, it's yours. Do you believe I'm able to do this? Well, yeah, because we read that verse in Mark before we got here. Braille. Whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. They're yours. It's yours. Be courageous. Be strong and of good courage. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. Jehovah said that to Joshua. Why? He wanted Joshua to see it. Oh, listen, you have to see it. You saw the walls coming down here first before they came down there at Jericho.
They said, of course we do. Why was he asking that question? So we would be able to read it. He wasn't asking it for them. He already knew they had it in the bag. They already could see themselves seeing. Right? Yes. They're following him down the street and they're blind. These stories are not for these people. They're for us. These are not accounts of things that happened in the past. They are. They did happen. But the purpose is them. Of them is yours. These are our stories helping us get a miracle from God. And their eyes were opened. Why? They'd already seen themselves seen. It happened to this guy here. You remember it? Mark chapter 2? Of course. Four guys, relatives probably, dad, brother, uncles, whatever. They heard, and their thoughts took over. Yahshua was down there at so-and-so's house. Okay? Whoa. They looked down at the kid. He's paralyzed. What happens then? Click. All four of them guys saw that kid walking home. While he was laying there. Do you know why you can't get a miracle from God? Because you can't see it. Here. You got to see it here. To see it there. If you can see it here. The four guys said, wait a minute. In my mind's eye, I see him walking home. I see the celebration at home. I see his mother running out. I see the Super Bowl party. I see it happening here before they left the house. So since they could see it here, it affected their behavior now. And whatever things they desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and it will be they both cart the kid down the street. They get to the house there. What happened? Bad news. There was too many people there. So the lesson is so spectacular. It's hard to believe. When you have an imagination for God. The devil is going to challenge you on it. He's going to put obstacles in front of you to get you to abandon what you see here so you never see it there. If he can get you to abandon this, you will lose that. You will never be healed. You will never be well. You will never win. They took him up to the roof, dug a hole in the roof. Hopefully the guy had good insurance. <laughs> and they all take off their robes, they make ties on, they drop him down through the lid. It's a mess. See, in Maricopa County, a lot of people have a church in their homes, you know, group meetings. But you have to keep everything clean there. Or you're not invited back. When you're desperate for a miracle, those are secondary issues. Keeping something clean. Yeah, they tore some boing, the tiles coming down. The dirt's falling down. Jesus going. Here comes this kid, Star Trek, right down through the ceiling. <laughs> What's going on there? That is all an expression of the four guys' imagination. Great businessmen have this, by the way. You know, that Amazon guy, what's his name? 
Bebos. This guy is, I guess he's the richest man in the world now or something like that. This guy ran this Amazon business and it lost money for years. Why didn't he quit? He saw this business up here. Drop him down and paralyticus. He's uh, paralyzed. He's got a spinal cord injury. They broke it up. They dropped the bed down. And guess what happened here? Jesus saw their faith. What generated that faith? They saw that kid when they were home. They saw him walking home. All four guys had it. See, where two or three are gathered together, there the Holy Ghost is in the midst. They saw the boy walking long before he ever got healed. Where? In their imagination. Why are Christians' failures in amount to nothing? The imagination cupboard is bare. Because if you don't see it here first, you'll never see it there. Second. He said, uh, Hecton, child, that's a, like a grade schooler or a junior high kid. Son, your sins be forgiven you. What happened here? It triggered a bunch of people that didn't have any imagination. They couldn't imagine him forgiving that boy of his sins. Why did he do that? His main, major problem wasn't that he was paralyzed. That was a physical problem. His main problem was in his heart. He had something guilt, some shame, something going on in there. And Jesus go, usually goes to inner healing first before he goes to healing. That's very common. Why? The heart is more important than the body. Son, your sins are forgiven me. Hey, I know you did this and that. And you're condemning yourself. You're running yourself down. You're, now you've got self-pity. Now you hate yourself. Very common thing if you're paralyzed, particularly back then where they had no benefits whatsoever for disabled people. Now they've got all kinds of high-tech stuff for disabled people. Hey, they couldn't imagine it. That's blasphemy. You can't for it. See, they had. Once your imagination is empty, so are your miracles. When your imagination runs out, so do your miracles. Who can forgive sins but God only? Aphemi is a Greek word. It means to release you from them. Who can release a person from their sins? Except God. Well, they were right. Only God could do that, and that's why he was doing it. And he looks down to the boy and he says, What? That was exactly what they had imagined when they picked up the cot six blocks that away. Don't you see it? Can't you see it? If you can imagine it, it will be. That was exactly what they were th imagining here in their mind. They saw that kid walking home on his own. Hey, Mark chapter 7. They brought to him one that was kaphos. He had a hearing deficit. He wasn't completely deaf, but he, had, he was hard of hearing. That's what it means. 
He had an impediment in his speech. Mago Alos, what does that mean? He could speak, but he could hardly be understood. Right? Have you ever heard somebody, get, you know, can talk, but you can't quite get it? They can hear, but, you know, it's... Those two together usually have speech deficits. Correct? Okay, that's what this guy had. He couldn't quite hear and quite speak correctly. And they begged him to put their hands upon him. What were they really doing? Expressing their imagination. They saw this guy hearing and speaking normally before they brought him to Jesus. Otherwise, it wouldn't have brought him. If you don't have any imagination, obviously you can't get a miracle because you can't see it. So you don't see it. If you see yourself well, if you see yourself healed, if you see yourself delivered, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and it will be. Croc had it. Right? Open up a hamburger shop and they, or was it Anaheim or something? Huh? No. No, he didn't see that. He saw McDonald's. The reason you don't have anything is because you don't see anything. If you don't see yourself prosperous, healed, delivered, if you don't see your destiny, you will never receive your destiny. Jesus took him aside, stuck his fingers here, <laughs> stuck his fingers in his ears, <laughs> spit and touched his tongue. Okay, what's going on there? I'm not sure, but the point is, uh, I just got an inspiration. I just saw it in my imagination, me spitting on you tonight. But <laughs> what it is is this. They saw him speaking and hearing normally before they brought him to him. They already had a mindset of victory. He looked up to heaven and did what? Ephratha. That's Chaldean. It means be opened. And it says straightway his ears were opened. Now this part here is interesting. This is very interesting to me. I read this several years ago, and it really was helpful in terms of deliverance. The anoigo. That means uh, that's a stream that is uh, kind of halfway blocked up. So you move these two rocks, and it starts flowing. That's what that means. Something's blocking it. His ears were opened. He could hear, but it wasn't completely open, if that makes sense. And it says, now here's something that's even more interesting. God revealed this to me. A desmos is like a band that you put on something, or duct tape, where you band it up, like handcuffs. There was a band on his tongue, so this is telling me that he had some kind of a spirit in his head that had blocked his hearing in his eardrum and had put some kind of a spiritual 
thing on his tongue and his tongue wouldn't work right and so you couldn't understand him. That's Aramaic, by the way. So I'm thinking here, I started praying like that years ago and it worked. Band, I command you to break. It was weird. And it says, should not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, Luke 13, here, here you can see a woman with a band. It says it right there. Should not this woman be loose from this Desmos, she had some kind of, demons have some weird skill to put bands or hooks or something in body parts. And they bend or torque or they don't work or they're blocked or something's not flowing right. That's what it is. It's a demonic band on the body part. It's weird. Anyway, this is a desmus. They use these plastic things now. They just, and you can't break them. That's what that Greek word means, some kind of a band on a body part that causes it not to work right. Your imagination, however, if you decide to develop one tonight, is going to be tested, right? It happened to Joseph. He has this dream from God. Boy, his imagination is working in overdrive. He sees himself as, as a king, king of the world. He sees him ruling over his family. What was he seeing there? His future. He makes the mistake of telling somebody. Listen, sometimes God gives you stuff and he just wants you to keep it between you and him for a while. Okay? Some people uh, get a blessing from God and their insecurities are so strong that they have to tell everybody about it. And then the devil steals it from them. Well, he starts blabbing it. I'm going to be your ruler. I'm going to be running this. Here's, what, here's my imagination running wild. And uh, his father goes, what are you? you got to be kidding no way and but his brothers were offended and they turned on him his dad didn't his dad got to thinking about it for a while and he just kind of parked it in the back of his mind his brothers turned on him and guess what happened he ended up in a well If you want a miracle from God, you're going to have to see it first before you see it here. When you start to use your imagination in a divine manner, the devil will notice it and he will challenge you on it. He dumped him down a well. Mark chapter 7. A woman, same Greek word, gune, wife, whose young daughter Gator, same Greek word, a youngster, junior high, had an unclean spirit. It says, as she heard of Jesus and came and fell at his feet. Prospipto means to fall down, forward, face down, flat down like that. I'm too old to demonstrate it, but you fall flat down there. That's where we get our English word. Pros yes, thank you, prostrate. And she was, where was she from? Yeah, she was from up north, right? She was up here. She says, Jesus ignored her. And his disciples said, what? <clears throat> Listen, the devil's going to send you people in your life who don't have the same imagination you do. And they will speak negativities into your life all the time. They're messengers of Satan. The devil sent that person to say negative things to you. He's trying to pop your imagination bubble. Because the devil knows that if that thing doesn't get popped, it's going to happen right in his face.
Then he's got a big mess on his plate when you start getting miracles. So you can't allow that. So he's going to send your relatives, your neighbors, your co-workers. Somebody's going to come to you and just that vomit negativity on you. That's what happened here. The disciples came to Jesus. Hey, this woman's imagination is driving us nuts. She came, came clear from Syria all the way down here. And she sees in her mind when she goes home, her daughter's perfectly whole. And she won't let this dream go. She won't let this imagination. She won't let. She won't get rid of it. We told her to leave. We begged her to stop yelling. We're sick of listening to her. You know what you need to do. You need to get sick of listening to people that speak negatively into your life. You need to get sick of that. See what happens is the devil keeps sending you somebody to. Speak negatively. It's almost like a speed bag in a gym. Boom, 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 boom. And pretty soon you get used to that noise. Click, 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 click. And it starts to just blend. You need to snap out of it. Yeah. You need to shake yourself out of that. Wait a minute. I don't want to hear that anymore. That's, I, I see where I'm going here. I know it's real. You're trying to destroy my imagination. You're trying to steal my miracle by saying negative things to me all the time. Yeah, they, they wanted her to leave. They wanted Jesus to kick her out. She keeps yelling at us. We're sick of it. <coughs> Ministers hate it when people yell at them. I'm used to it, but I mean, I'm talking about regular ministers. <laughs> Pastors, men, they do not like that. They don't like to be yelled at. They want you out. So Jesus then gives us a miracle 2,000 years later. He's illustrating something here. It's incredibly important. He starts to say to her, hey, wait a minute. You're not even Jewish. I'm the Jewish Messiah, and they come first. What was he doing there? Trying to get her to faint and depression and kill herself? No. He was illustrating for us how you sometimes have to persevere in prayer a little bit to get a miracle from God. Most people just want a light switch fix. Click. Give me a miracle. Click. How about another one? Okay, I'm fine. Boop. Out the door. That's not God's will. If you can't develop a little fire, a little fight, if you can't pray through once in a while, you won't be able to pray through when your life's at stake. You won't be able to pray through when you're in your ministry there if you can't pray through here. If God gives you a cakewalk here, he won't give you your ministry there because that ministry is not a cakewalk. Ministries aren't cakewalks. Far from it. The woman wouldn't receive that. She said, what do I got to do here to get through to him? I know what I'll do. I'll hit him in his weak spot. Boom. She nails him. Right in the compassion Oh, she got him. The good Lord's got a weak spot. Did you know that? Yeah, it's a spot right in here. It's, it's a compassion spot. You hit him there, he crumbles. He crumbles. Lord, help me. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. Jesus said the Children should be filled first. It's not proper to take the children's bread and just throw it out to the canary and the puppies. She said, Lord, that's true, but the puppies eat crumbs that fall from their master's table. What's the story here? This exchange, is that what's important? No, it's the concept. Her imagination 
had drove her from her country to Israel. She wasn't even Jewish. She saw her daughter completely whole and out of bed. That imagination, that seeing what was happening there first, drove her all the way there. Then she had to overcome the church people, the pastoral staff, the sinners, and then Jewish doctrine. I can't prove this, but this may have been the toughest human being in the Bible, this woman. But let me tell you something. Love will push some people way beyond human bounds. It did at Calvary. This woman, love and her imagination would not allow her to take no for an answer. What happened to your ministry? Why does your life suck? Easy to figure out. You took no from the devil for an answer. You took no for an answer. And the devil said, thank you. Up. And you lost your dream. It disappeared. You wasted decades for nothing. Well, this woman from Syria, wasn't even Jewish, wasn't about to take no for an answer. Oh no, why? The devil had not popped what she saw here. Her daughter completely whole. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray and believe that you receive them, and it will be. Woman, man, you got more faith than these Jews that I hang around with every day. Be it unto you even as Thalo, the way you want it. Oh, you don't see it. Oh, your imagination is what you want. If it's a demonic imagination, it's fear based. And an impending doom. If it's a divine imagination, it's what you want. You have faith for your destiny. You have faith for your healing. You have faith for you have faith for that. That's your dream. You are imagining it. So you get it the way Thalo, the way you want it. At that very moment, what happened? What, what's it saying? What she had imagined had become real. If you can see it here, you'll see it there. It works. When she came home to our house, she found the demon had gone out of her daughter and her daughter thrown on the bed. Fabulous. Guess what? You already know that, right? You sure can. You can lose your imagination. Check it out. Mother Mary lost hers. You remember that story? That was spectacular. Some angel shows up to some 12, 13, 14 year old girl and says, Hey, guess what? What? <laughs> You're going to give birth to the Son of God. Well, how's that going to happen? It's supernatural. You will be con conceived by the Holy Ghost. And he will be great. He will be called the Son of the Highest. He will save his people from their sins. She says, well, I got it. Click. Some of you, God gave you that vision that imagination years ago and it faded away through adversity and disappointments Mary saw it all she said be it unto me according to thy word incredible 
She believed it. She saw it. I'm going to be getting pregnant. Boop. I don't. I'm going to be a virgin. I'm giving birth to the Son of God. She caught it. Right? She went with it. But what happened? Listen, the devil will try to drag you out over the years to wipe out what you saw years ago. To try to steal it from you. And he can do it using time and adversity. Jesus has now grown up and he's teaching to these huge crowds and the scribes and Pharisees are constantly criticizing him and they're telling everybody he's got demons. <laughs> yeah, if you ever decide to get into the deliverance ministry, people will tell you you have them. I've been told that several times. And that's just by my own staff. <laughs> They've been telling Mother Mary and her brother, his brothers and sisters, that, hey, your son is chuck full of demons. He's crazy. And Mother Mary forgets about Gabriel. She forgets about what she had. She loses it. And they come to him and try, they try to bring him home. Hey, come out here. We're looking for you. You've lost your mind. Your brother... Mother and your brothers are seeking for you. My guess is Joseph was dead by now. Or he was sick and disabled or something, but he wasn't around. But anyway, Jesus said, whoa, hold on a minute. Click. My mother lost it. She forgot this. That's hard to forget. It's my understanding. I wouldn't know from personal experience. But when you're pregnant, you can remember that. When you got pregnant without any help, that you remember. That's a one-of-a-kind pregnancy. Gone. He shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign. Soup. Gone. Why? Other people saying negative things. If you listen to them, you will lose it here. You will no longer see it. And you will never see it there. If Mother Mary can lose hers, anybody can. How about the rich young ruler, Mark chapter 10? He says, what do I need to do to go to heaven? He says, well, you know what the law says. Click, 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 click. He goes, wait a minute. Teacher, didaskalos, I do, I've done all these things from the time I was little. I got all that covered. No. Jesus looked at him and loved him, and he said, you're, you're missing one thing. What was the law he was breaking? Thou shalt not covet Anything that is thy neighbor's. Correct? He had greed. And he loved money and material things. And Jesus said, listen, we can fix this though. Just sell your stuff. Give it to the poor. You, you come follow me. And you will be spectacularly, unbelievably wealthy in glory. In order for you to believe that, you have to have an imagination. You can't believe in heaven and the glories of heaven and have zero imagination, can you? I mean, that's hard to do. If you say, well, I believe that, that's just your thoughts. It's just intellectual. That doesn't mean nothing. It has to be here. You'll be fabulously wealthy in heaven. What happened? He couldn't imagine it. He could not imagine him living without his stuff. And he couldn't imagine heavenly wealth that made his stuff look like poverty. 
He had no imagination for the things of God. Why does your Christian life suck? I just told you. You've got your thoughts focused on these things here, but your imagination for the things of God are gone. What does he tell the kid? Listen, come and take up your cross. That was mistranslated. Iro means to pick up and get rid of. Pick up and get rid of what cross? Greed. Each person has a cross God wants them to get rid of. It's not a cross you bear, meaning you keep it. That's not what it says. It says get rid of it. Negativity, lust, greed, anger. Bitterness, demons, sickness. Get rid of this cross you're bearing and come follow me. And you'll be fabulously wealthy. What's he saying there? Let your imagination run wild. Whatever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and it shall be. Couldn't do it. What happened to him? He walked off. First John chapter 2. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Oops. Now this Greek word was misleading here. It's not the noun. Agape. Right? It's agapao. It's the verb love. A verb, verb love is different than loving you. I can love you from here, but I can't love you from here. I got to get to you. See, love doesn't do anybody any good until you get it to them. For newlyweds, they call it a honeymoon. See, you spend all night and the next night, and cruise and this and that. Lovey, dovey, 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 dovey. And you, you better get it in then. <laughs> Clock. Clock is ticking. Clock is ticking on that one. Don't you see? Love is not something you just have here. Having it here ain't good enough. You didn't hear me. God's love isn't good enough. He didn't say God loved the world. He said he so loved the world. Agapao. He got his love to you by sending his son. Loving somebody don't do anybody any good. Love ya. Love ya. Hope that gives you some psychological comfort. Agapao is when you get your love to the person. You're focused on your material things, your family, your kids, your soccer, your material career, your 401k, that is you getting your love to you. You're doing all these things for you. That's love. Correct? Bob, why do you work 70 hours a week? Oh, my kids need college. My, I want this for my kids. I don't want my kids. I was poor when I was a kid. I want my kids to see that. He's getting his love to the kids. John said, do not get your love to cosmos, the human world. That'll lead you nowhere. You're going to end up a loser. Because you, quote, can't take it with you. If any man gets their love to the human world, human things. The what? The noun, the love of God, is not in them. Can you believe that scripture? That scripture is so nuts, nobody ever teaches on it the way it should be taught. You can tell if somebody loves somebody. You can tell what they love. A 
All you got to do is watch them. <coughs> They'll show you what they love. Every single day. You can tell if somebody truly loves God because they get their love to him, not to the world. Jesus said, hey, you're getting your love to your stuff, rich young ruler. Listen, get rid of that stuff. Get rid of your cross. Throw it out. Follow me. And you will have treasures in heaven. Translation, Father's got your retirement already in the bag. Who do you feel sorry is for? <clears throat> well, a lot of people, but Warren Buffett is one guy I feel incredibly sorry for. I saw a special on that man. He's a, he's a remarkable human being. Really nice person, down-home type guy, does not love money, doesn't love material things. He was fascinated as a kid by how businesses work. And for some reason, that just clicked with him. And he became a genius. A literal genius at businesses and investing in companies. A literal genius. The best anybody's ever seen. They were asking him, come to find out, he doesn't believe in God. And now he's giving all of his money away. Because they said to him, to the guy interviewing him, it ain't doing me any good. He's old now. What good's money? Isn't that amazing? A guy without the Holy Ghost has kind of a perspective that most Christians don't have. The poor guy is dropping dead here in a year or two and he'll stand before God and end up in hell when he gave billions away. And by Christian standards, he would be a fantastic Christian with a great reward in heaven and here the guy is going to die and go to hell. What a story William Buffett is, in my opinion, Warren Buffett. He acts more like a Christian than Christians do. What did he just say? I'm not going to say it again because I don't want to get into it. If any man love the world, agapao, get their love to the things of the world, the agape, love of God, is not in them. Why? They don't have any imagination for the things of God. Their imagination is on the things of the world. I know, I used to do that. I, that's all I thought about. How do I get my business growing? How do I make more money? How do I pick up some more accounts? What do I need to do? Blah, blah, blah. I lived for years like that. Fool. Thank God my daughter Tracy came along. I had, a, as alcoholics say, a moment of clarity. I was wasting my life chasing skirts and chasing money. I was crazy. I had that thing going off in my head. I was living in sin. I was blinded. Now, my imagination is not success, money. I have a different imagination now. I see. I can see them. All getting healed, all getting delivered, hundreds at a service. I see them. You say, well, that doesn't look like it's going to happen. What looks to you has nothing to do with what I see. Your imagination should be here, not on the things. All that's in the world. Same Greek word that we went over in the other verse for adultery now is applied to material things and money. Epithemia, the passions of the flesh. What is that? I like nice things. I want nice things. I want nice clothes. I want a nice car. I want a nice, I want nice come, creature comfort. I want, I want to live in Dubai. The loss of the eyes. Aladzonia, boasting about what I have and what I... I used to do that all the time. 
in the secular world. Everybody did it. We would we called it happy hour. But a happy hour, and you boast about everything. That is all demonic. That's all carnal. That is all of the world. You are not supposed to be of the world. You are supposed to have a different imagination. You're supposed to have a different mindset. That's who you are. The world passes away. And the lust, the passions of the world, pass away. Parago means to pass along, like a boat. It didn't disappear, it just passed you by. The world never disappears, it just passes into another state, another condition. Passes you by. Guess what? He that poieo practices, not agrees with mentally, not daydreams about, you have to do it. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe, postuo, step out on it, and it will be. <laughs> What's the best way to fail as a Christian? Here, I'll illustrate it for you. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sermon over yet? Oh. Oh, he was good today. He really got he got everybody pumped. <laughs> oh, Great. Ooh. Wow. A China China buffet open? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Ooh. Oh, passing gas. Gotta get out of the church. Head into the parking lot. Okay, that's not practicing the will of God. That's not a imagination. That's not your imagination. That's not your call. If you're to do something. Do something. As grandpa used to say, Mike, do something, even if it's wrong. Do something. <laughs> we'll sit there and do nothing, he said. <laughs> He's right, basically. Who's on board here? Amen. You know what your problem is? Your imagination stinks. You know why? Connected to your imagination are your thoughts. And if you have negative thoughts about yourself or others, about things or your future, whatever it may be, that will ruin your divine imagination. Because if you can see it here, you will see it here. God spent chapter after chapter trying to get Moses and Joshua to expand their imagination and see these miracles before they happened. If you can see it, it's yours. Your imagination can be your very best friend. Your imagination triggers miracles from God. If you can see yourself healed, delivered, and in your destiny, prosperous, whatever it is you're Believing for, if you can see it, you can have it. It's yours. Whatever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and they shall be. Let's pray then. Lord, some of my friends here tonight have gone through some tough times. And I know exactly how they feel. You know, I'm a regular person too, and I go through tough times like they do. 
And I know how the devil works. He he piles on you. And he he steals your imagination. He steals your dreams. He causes them to kind of fade like Mother Mary. She didn't see it anymore. She didn't see it anymore. She saw you in the temple that day when you were 12 years old. She said, what are you doing in here? We've been hunting all over for you. We lost our imagination. And you told her, I must be about my father's business. And that's what my friends must be about tonight. Father's business. And I'm praying right now, Lord, you will give my friends a new imagination. I want you to give them something for them to see. If they can just see it here, I know you'll do it here. I know you will. I'm asking you to help them. Lord, none of us can accomplish anything spiritual, anything in ministry, anything for you. None of us can. If we don't, see it first. And step out and see it second. All of us have got to have a godly, divine imagination. And I'm asking you, people that have chronic negative thoughts and negative thinking, chronically saying and thinking negative things, I'm asking you to give them grace to repent tonight and to change so they can renew their divine imagination and receive their destiny and they can receive what they've been called to be in Christ. Because each person in this room, I know this for absolute truth, has some call from God on their life. Every single person, and every Christian has it. I'm going to ask you to heal them tonight in the name of Jesus. And ask him to heal him tonight. Amen. Now listen, you got negative thoughts and you've lost your imagination and you went through hard times and you've been discouraged. I want you to come up here so we can pray for you. I'm going to ask God to renew your imagination and give you back your God-given dreams. You had, it, you had it before and then it fizzled out on you. And the devil done to you what he done to me. He put a bunch of hard times on me. He gave me a bunch of adversity. He sent me a bunch of nagging naysayers, people that spoke negative things in my life. Yeah, he does it to everybody. So Satan's an equal opportunity abuser. He hates every single person, 100%. He's far more consistent than Christians are. Far more. You can trust the devil. He will hate you. That you can be sure of. But tonight, we're going to do an end around on him. We're going to give it to him. Tonight, you're going to get back your divine imagination. And you're going to repent of negativity, negative thoughts, and negative words, and you can repent listening to other people dump those things into your mind and your spirit and your soul. You're going to repent of it tonight. You've gone through a lot of hard times, and as a result of that, your mind has a negativity bent. You kind of expect things to go bad. You're going to repent of that tonight because your imagination is going to turn that around. You're going to expect things to go good. Tonight we're going to be like Oral Roberts. Yeah, that's it. We'll have an Oral Roberts night. Something good is going to happen to you. 
happen to you this very day. Oh, aren't you happy you're here listening to a Grammy Award singer? <laughs> oh, you lucky, lucky Christians. No, think about it. You change your imagination. You stop listening to negative people speak into your life. You'll be shocked at the miracles that will start coming your way. You'll be stunned. If you keep your negative imagination and those negative thoughts, the Bible guarantees you you're going to get nothing. And you're going to end up bankrupt. Spiritually bankrupt. And you can break this curse off you right now if you'll just repent. Let's do it together. Say it out. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. Sorry for what I've done. Sorry for what I've said. I repent of these vain imaginations that caused Jehovah to kill the world. Man had developed vain imagination. I repent of this tonight. Right this second. Negativity. Negative words for other, from other people, other Christians, other ministers, relatives, friends, co whatever it is, I repent of it right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of this right now. I'm asking you to forgive me in the name of the Lord for constant thinking negative thoughts. Come out. Come out right now. Go constantly thinking negative things. I repent of it right now. I'm so sorry. I lay these negative imaginations on the altar and I command this to come out of me right now. I command these bad dreams, these negative thoughts, these negative dreams, I command them in the name of Jesus to come out right now. Come out of me right now. I renounce them in the name of the Lord. I renounce them in Jesus' mighty name. I do not see myself a failure anymore. I do not see myself a spiritual loser anymore. I do not see myself sick forever. I do not see myself infected with demons for the rest of my life. I do not see myself poor and in poverty and having lack and nothing for the rest of my life. I repent of these imaginations. I repent of these thoughts right now. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of me this second. Come out right now. Every spirit, every spirit, come out of there, I said. Right now, hurry up. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come out of there. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Get out of that body right now. Come out right now. Get out of there, I said. Come out right now. Come out. Go. Come out right now. Come out. Get out. Get out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Go. 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 Every evil spirit. Come out. Every negative thought. Go. Poverty spirit. Poverty curse. Go. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out. Every doubt. Every unbelief. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Every negative thought about myself. Every ounce of self-hatred. Bipolar. I command you to come out in the name of the Lord. I command you to come out in Jesus' mighty name. Seeing myself as a failure. Come out in the name of Jesus. I repent right now. Of seeing myself as a failure with nothing. I repent of it right now, of seeing myself a nothing and nobody. I receive back my imagination, my divine imagination. I see myself being healed. I see myself being delivered. I see myself. Come on. I see it right now. I see it in the name of Jesus. I see it and feel it in the name of Jesus. Come on. I command this thing. Negativity. Come out of me right now. Curse words over my life. My mother and father, come out. Curse words for my spouse. Come out of me in Jesus' name. I bind these negative imaginations. Come out. Thus saith the Lord. Come out. All these negative thoughts about myself. I command it to leave. I command it to come out. I command it to come out. Go. Poverty, depression, bipolar, go, go, get out buddy, keep coughing, come out right now, come out of there, every demon from his ex-wife, every demon from, come out, come out, every demon from her, come out, 
Every curse word. Schizophrenia. Schizophrenia. Come out. Doubt and unbelief. Unbelief and doubt. Get out of my body right now. Come out. Come out. Get out. I'm sick of living in life of a loser. Come out of me right now. Demon of a failure. Spirit of failure. Come out of me right this second. Spirit of failure. Come on me right now. I receive the full anointing of the Holy Ghost. I receive my gift of healing in Jesus' name. Negative thoughts come out of me right this second. Come out. Come out of here. Spirit of fear. Spirit of fear from childhood. Come out right now. Come out of me. Fear of man. Go. Being afraid of people. Being afraid of men. Come out. Come out right now. Come on. Let your tears go. Come out. There it goes. Come out. Come out of there. There it is. I need the Holy Ghost on you. Go for it. Come on, the Holy Ghost on you. Take it. Come on. Come on. The Holy Ghost is here. Go for it. Go for it. The Holy Ghost is here. Anything can happen. I renounce every negative thought. Get out of body right now. Get out of there. Every curse word she ever said to you. Go. Hey, come out. It's my wife's insanity. Come out in Jesus' name. Go. Go in Jesus' name. Come out. Come out. I see myself healed. I see myself healed. Go. I see myself delivered. I see myself healed. Satan, lose your hold. I see myself victorious. I see myself winning. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Right now. I see myself completely healed. Get out of my back right now. I command you. Jesus, come out of my back. Come out of there. Come out. Come out of there. Get out of my body right now. I see myself healed. I feel myself healed. I receive my divine imagination. I receive it back in Jesus' holy name. I receive it back right now. Go. You get kill out of there right now. Get it. Come out of me right now. Kill. Kill. Get out of my body right now. Get out of my head. I command you right now. Kill. Come out right now. Go. Kill. Come out. Come out. Demon gods. Come out. Demon gods. Come out of me. Come out right now. Lord God, give him the give him the gift of godly sorrow tonight. Godly sorrow. Heal. Heal this man of God. Lord God, save him from wasting another year like he wasted all the other ones. No more wasted years. Come out. Demon gods, come out of me right now. Go, get out of my body right now. Stop moving my body. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out right now. Just get mad. Come out of my body right now. Just get mad. I hate you. Get mad. Demon, kill. Spirit, the demon named Kill. I bind your power. Come out. Suicide, I bind your power. Come out. Murder, I bind your power. Come out. Come out of there. Get out of my body right now. Come out right now. Go in Jesus' holy name. Go. Get out. Come out. Come out. Let your tears go. Come out. Come out. Get out. Get out of my body right now. Come out of there. Hurry up. Come out. Come out, you insane snake. Go. Unbelief and doubt. Go. Go. You're speaking to Go right now. Go. Go ahead. Loud. Okay, stop. I said that's a demon tongue. Hold on. Let's fix them. Just pray after me. Did you notice how I was speaking in short syllables? You notice that? Notice how yours was all running together? See the difference? Yeah. Okay. This time, now you follow me and then you add your own. Short syllables. Ready? Get out of that body right now. Come out of there quicker. Faster, I said. Get out of that body right now. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. 
Get out of the man of God. Come out of her. Hurry up. Fola vashata. Fole veshe. Kura mashapa. Just like, good, there you go. Come on. Satan, lose your hold. Get out of that body right now. Spirit of infirmity, come out of them joints. Spirit of infirmity. Insanity demons from his wife. Come out of him. Insanity. Go. Go. Come out now. Get out of body now. Go. Come out now. Go. Come out now. Go. Hurry up. Go. Get out of there. Get out of there. I bind every negative thought. I bind every negative imagination. Every negative dream. I bind your power. And I command you to loose me right this second. I command you to loose me right. Get him. Hi, man. Force him out. How do I force him out? Huh? How do I force him out? You have to get mad. Get mad? Yeah, at him. Come out of my body right now. There you go. Get mad at him. Just get mad. Go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pray harder. Pray harder. Pray harder. Fight harder. Get out of my hips right this second. Go. Come out. Hurry up. There he is. Here he comes. Go. Come out, Satan. Come on, you rotten devil. You stinking demon. Stop trying to hide my body. Come out right now. Every one of them, go. Every one of them, come out. Get out of my brain. Negativity, come out. Come out. Every demon of religion, come out. Religion, go. Church denominations, come out. Church demons, come out. Go. Church demons, go. Hurry up. Get out of there. Get out of that body right now. In the name of the Lord. I command you, devil. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the what? The what? The Holy Ghost raises up a standard against him. Look, that guy there has got suicide demons. The Holy Ghost raises up a standard against him. Come on, you gotta pray harder. Come on, you gotta pray harder. I command every vain imagination to come out of my head. I command every negative dream come out of my subconscious. Get out of my head, get out of my mind, come out of my subconscious. I command you to clear and go. And go, I said. Go now. Go now. Go now. Sweet Jesus, give me back my tears and get this fear spirit out of me right now. I want this fear spirit from my childhood out. I want him out of there. Insecurity, being timid, being shy. Come out of me right now, right now, in the name of Jesus. Come out. Weakness. Get out of here right now. Come out of here right now. Hurry up. Get out quickly. Come out. Faster. Come out faster. Come out faster. Faster. Get out of that body faster. Quicker. Quicker, I said. Come out quicker. Come out of that stomach. Come out of that stomach right now. Come out. Come out. Get out right now, I said. Satan, lose the man of God. Lose the man of God right now. Lose him. Come on. Fight your way through. Fight your way through. Come on. Fight your way out. Come on. If you can see it, you will see it. If you can see it here, you will see it there. You will never, you will never see yourself delivered if you don't see it here first. You see yourself delivered. You see yourself strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I see myself in the name of Jesus. Strong and of good courage. I see myself casting out every spirit of fear. 
and doubt and unbelief. I command this false personality hiding in my mind. Come out. I command this fake personality in my head to get out of my mind now. I command mental illness. Come on, buddy. I want you out at any cost. Come out at any cost. There he comes. There he comes. Come out. Disappointments and heartaches, go. Poverty and pain, go. Sorrow and sadness, go. Sorrow and sickness and sadness, go. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. All the sickness, all the hard years, all the pain, all the lack, all the poverty, come out in the name of Jesus. All of it, come out now. Come out now. Poverty and failure, go. I said go. You have to see this thing. It's got to be seen here first. You've got to see it. To see it. Come on. You have to see it. To be able to see it. Whatever you desire. When you pray, listen, deliverance of the children's bread. I tell you, you just ask him for what you've already been promised. You are already promised deliverance. Deliverance is the children's bread. Deliverance is for Christians. Deliverance is for Christians. You've already been promised your healing. You've already been promised it. Whatsoever things you ask for that you've already been promised, believing it will be. <laughs> when you pray, step out in your faith. It's easy to do. You step out in your faith like this. <laughs> Spirit, I command you by the authority of the word of God to come out of my body. That is stepping out in your faith. I just I just showed you how to do it. YouTubers, put your hand on your head. Put your hand on your stomach. Put your hand on your back. Put your hand on your knees. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ, by the authority of the word of God, get out of my body. Get out of my head. Negative, intrusive, repetitive thoughts, get out of my head. Yes, that is... Pistuo, that's stepping out on your faith. Do you need to repent in order to be delivered? Okay, by faith, do it. By faith, I'm going to repent. Come on. Just repent of it. How do you do that? It's so easy. You got to confess it. Can just go ahead and confess it. You got poverty problems? Okay. Just confess you wasted all this money for all these years. Just confess it, okay? Let's work on poverty tonight. Are you broke? Okay. Tell the Lord you're sorry. Father, in the name of Jesus, I blew tens of thousands, in some cases hundreds of thousands of dollars. I wasted them. As the Old Testament says, I pissed them against the wall. I lost all this money for years, and I wasted it. It was all wasted. And I apologize for all the money I wasted. And I ask you to forgive me. I should have used that money for your glory. I should have been a good steward of the finances, and I failed. And so I repent of it and ask for your forgiveness in the name of Jesus. And I command this poverty curse to break off of me now. Break off of me now. I see this curse breaking off of me. And because I see it here, I will see it in my life. Because I see it here, I will see it in my finances. Because I see it here. It will be. It will be. 
I command this horrible curse of finances to break off me now. Break off me now. I command that demon that makes me move around to come out of me right this second. Get out of my body right now. Come out of my body right now. Go. If you can see it here, you will receive it there. That's how the gospel works. That's how it works. You got to see it here to receive it there. You can receive it. Oh, let's go to healings. YouTubers, something's blocking your healing. It's doubt, unbelief, unforgiveness, self hatred. So I just pray for him, and he, he has a lot of injuries. Injuries? Like multiple injuries to his body, and he's young, and he's not getting healed, and I don't know why. Oh. Hey, you got a bunch of injuries, huh? Uh, yeah, what's, what's the worst one? Don't matter, pick one. Which one caused the most pain? Pick one. Different times. Different times. How about today? Oh, Which one today? My, my hips, my body always turned, my mid back, my neck. Were you in sports or something? Gymnastics hardcore, football hardcore, two accidents. I've herniated discs, bulging discs, arthritis. Two accidents, in my neck, car, wreck, car, car wrecks. accidents. Uh, my hips lock up. How'd you hurt your neck? And, uh, arts, arthritis. And oh, arthritis? Okay. Degenerative disc stuff. Now, uh, when you were little here, did somebody hurt you real bad when you were a kid? Uh, wasn't I didn't have a great home. What was wrong with your home? Um, my mom got sick when I was real young. Um, I, I I also played Show Me Yours, I'll Show You Mine with my littler cousin when I was really young. You played what? Show doctor. Me Yours, I'll Show You oh, Mine. Oh, doctor playing doctor. doctor. There you go, okay. With who? Uh, my little cousin. How old were you then? Uh, under 10. Okay. Um, but uh, was there any perversion like that in your family, parents, grandparents, or anything like that? Oh, yeah. My dad and his whole family was raped by his dad. Oh, Grandpa was a pervert. Yeah. Okay, what was Catholic. Grandpa's he name? Was uh, he was an alcoholic Catholic. Yes. Okay, what's uh, the name? Don. Don. Let me add this in here. My wife's family is Methodist, and I seem to have a huge problem and block when it comes to them. Um, block for what? Thoughts in whether or not to cut our, to, to stay away, because they do nothing but tell me how stupid and wrong and, and mean and angry and just everything. Are I they Catholic? They're Methodist? Methodist. And your, your background is uh, Catholic, non -denomination. Non -denomination. His name was just, Don. His name was Don. Okay. Now what happened was Don's demons came down. Click. Click. And then when you were ten, you were fooling around her. You see that? It wasn't you. There's another person in there. Grandpa. You be that support. It wasn't you. You be that support. You thought it was you. Amen. Amen. I'm just, those last couple of years, I just, my emotional cup is so full, so somebody says, hi, what are you looking at? That's not you. It's not me. And I don't, of course I've, it's not I've you. I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed and I'm chasing that this thing down to me. It's not going to work. What am I doing wrong, brother? Oh, I'm about to tell you. Now, you got to go back to the beginning. Don. He started it. Then, the demons told you, ruin yourself. We're speaking to all sensitivity, all nerves right now. Of that skin, be healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. You ruined yourself. 
and then the demons blocked your healing. It was all set up. Remember when I called you? I, I doubt. I doubt it. Um, I called and left a message. You called me back. It was on uh, a Thursday show of the 1280 KXCG, the trumpet thing. You're saying if you, your your parents don't provoke your children to wrath. You know, if you had, uh, if you were angry or picked on or made mad a whole bunch of times when you were young, whatever, call me. So what I do? Turn off the radio and I call you. Now, thank God you did. We got to start at dawn. And then move forward. They got you when you were a kid. And by the time you were 10, fooling around with her. Drinking by the time I was 12. See? Drinking my whole life. Not anymore, but. There's a person here that got into Don. This perversion spirit got into Don before you were born. Click your dad. Got into him. Click. Ten years old. Twelve years old. How old are you now? Thirty one years old. None of it's you. It wasn't your granddad. He got in your granddad. Your granddad became another person. He got into your dad. Became another person. I feel me, my soul crying out to fight, and it's not. You're cry yeah, because that's God trying to help you. I know. You want to do the right thing. I do. And he's touching you right now. Because you've got a good heart. That's the real you. Not this other person who's mad. That's not you. That was not you touching that girl. Father loves the real you. And he's calling you, and you can feel it in there. You're crying out to God. I want to do what's right. I want to be healed. I love you. That's the real you. There's two yous. It's real. Thank you, Jesus. Raise your hand. Lord, I love you. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I love you, Lord. Thank you for loving the real me. If my granddad was here, I'd just forgive him. If my dad was here tonight, Lord, I'd just forgive him. I just love him. I see it now. It wasn't my dad doing that. He got raped. Grandpa. Grandpa spread him. Unclean spirits. They got in me. And now I got a temper. But I see it now. That's not me. I love you, Lord. The real me loves you. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I see myself. We pull that of affliction out free. Of right now. I, didn't do that. I see myself free. Lord, you said, Behold, I give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt me. I see it now. This is not me. This is a spirit hiding in my body, causing me to molest a little girl, causing me to drink, causing me to swear, causing me to rage. That is not me. That's him. Tonight, I come against him with the blood that Jesus shed. I separate him from me, my 
real self. I command that fake self to come out of there right now. I command you in the name of Jesus. That is not me. My relatives keep saying negative things to me. That is not my relatives. Those are demons in their head telling them to degrade me and humiliate me and reject me. I see it now. I see it now. I see it now. I see myself free. I command you, devil, come out of me in the name of Jesus Christ. I command Don to leave me right now. Grandpa, I love you, but you must go now. I love you, but you must go now. It's time for you to leave. It's time for you to go right now. I forgive you and I release you. All right, take a breath and blow. Breathe. Good. Keep breathing. Come out. Keep breathing. Grandpa. Don, come out here. Don. Come out of your grandson right now. Come out of your grandson. Dad, I love you, but come out of me. Come out. All my relatives, I forgive them and I release them. I release all my relatives right now. I let my grand my grandpa go, the pervert. I let my dad go, the broken-hearted abuser. I let him go now. I release him. I see myself free. I see myself free. I see myself free. I see myself free. Go. Come out, you pervert. I want my demon of anger out of there. Spirit of anger and rage, come out of me. Get out of me, I said. Come out of my lungs. Come out of my lungs. Get out of there. Hatred, rage, that is not me. That's grandpa. Grandpa's demons. I let Don go. I let this demon of anger go. That is not my personality, that's him. Hatred for my relatives for criticizing me. I repent of it. Hatred for myself. I repent of it. I repent of it right now. Now. Anger to my relatives. I forgive them. Go. Stop jumping in my stomach and come out of there. Demon of fear, come out right now. Instead of hating myself, I now hate you, you rotten devil. Come out, Grandpa. Grandpa's demons, come out. Dad's demons, come out. My demons, come out. Alcoholism spirits, come out. Pornography spirits, come out. Lost spirits, come out. Rage. Tattoo demons, go. Tattoo demons, go. Come out. Go. Get out of me. Come out of me right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Come out of there. That's the guy from Tuesday, and he thinks Ooh. that his that this guy, and he thinks all his sickness are from God. To, 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 to humble him and stuff. What? I couldn't get nothing out of Tuesday. Listen, all those sicknesses in your body, that's not you. Those come from demons. They started with Grandpa. No, they lied to you. It's all, it's all fabrications. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. God's not punishing you for anything. He's never had a bad thought about you. That's, those are the devil punishing you. You're living in delusions. Hey, John, love you. You're living in delusions. 
the, they, they told me that I have borderline diabetes, so pray against me. Okay. Because Ginger had that. Yeah, I know. Come on. Huh? huh? That's them doing it. They're doing it. Because they heard me telling you what was true. But they don't want to hear any truth. They panic. Listen, God doesn't punish people like this. He punished you at Calvary. Jesus took your beating. That's grandpa started that. You inherited it. Click, click, click. I didn't have to embrace it so well. They told you to embrace it, and then you started sinning. Of course you did. What do you What do you expect them to do? Tell you to turn to God? You gotta be kidding. Their job is to damn your soul to hell, not help you. My job's to help you. But I can't help you if you keep believing lies. There's nothing wrong with you. I'll prove it to you. Let's pretend I'm invisible right now. Whoop, I'm gone. Now, you feel your arm bent like that? And you're saying to yourself, my God, my arm's bent. I better go to the doctor. What's wrong with my arm? So you go to the doctor. The doctor can't see me either. Right? He can't see me either. But I'm bending your arm. And the doctor goes, well, I don't know what that is. Here's some muscle relaxers. We need you some physical therapy. Uh, come back in two weeks. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you, Mike, let my arm go. There was nothing wrong with your arm. I was bending it. I was doing that. They're doing that. There's nothing wrong with you. You are not a pervert. They told you to fondle her. You were only 10. 10 year olds don't fondle kids. Demons tell them to do it. Change. There's nothing wrong with you. He sees all this. He loves you, not them. You just told me you got all stiff. You said, hey, I'm stiffing it up. You weren't doing that, were you? I wasn't doing it. Let's. Who was doing it? Uh, them. God wasn't doing it. I guarantee you that. He never hurts anybody. He wants to help people. It's called the gospel. God's a good God. He, did you hear what you just said? That's you talking now. There we go. That's them causing this. This turns against them, not your relatives. I'm going to pretend I'm your relative. You piece of... You're a loser. That wasn't her talking to you. Well, what do I do? do you don't have any dessert. No, do you I do what I tell you. You do what I tell you. That was not her saying that. That was them. They, She's infected. You don't see that? And they're telling her, hey, if this kid gets delivered, he's going to be a killer for Christ, and we cannot let that. We have to beat this guy down. Listen, the demons see your destiny better than you do. That's why they're fighting so hard to ruin you. Brother, I preach that. If 
I you want you to how much the God loved you. The devil doesn't want that, so he does everything he can. He comes against you. When you're sitting there, he doesn't care. Why he doesn't care? Because you're not doing anything for God's kingdom. That's 100 percent correct. These issues are not you. They're doing it. Why are they doing it? They hate you. Duh. Why are they doing it? You sinned. You open the door, they came in. Now you're going to throw them out. It's easy to do. You pray like this. Lord, I apologize for blaming stuff on you. I should have never done that. I'm sorry I had negative thoughts about myself. I'm sorry I took offenses against these relatives. That keeps the demons in. I'm doing everything I can to help them. Well, tonight at the Deliverance Center, I'm going to do everything I can to hurt them. And we command any person right now, any spirit that's operating, giving him this From this day forward. That's putting pressure on him right now. Come up and out in the name of Jesus. You got to turn on him. There's nothing wrong with you. You're not sick. You're not stupid. You're not mentally ill. You're none of those things. None. The demons even told you they weren't in there. Yeah, they've told you that. Oh, we're not in here. That's just your sin. You did. <laughs> They'll say anything to stay in there. Anything. See? Do you feel that? Yeah, he just heard me. He didn't want to hear that. I mean, this is real. I'm living it. Dude, they're listening to me. They know it's real. You change your mindset, they're in deep doo doo. You got them. Grandpa started it. You go back to Grandpa. Father, forgive me. I didn't see it. I was not a pervert at 10 years old. That